Hi guys, this is Miss Eisencraft with an Algebra 2 tutorial on graphing piecewise functions, Delta Math, extra learning opportunity. All right, so a couple things. First of all, I wanted to show you there's this awesome watch help video already loaded here. Super helpful. Um, and then I wanted to mention that the strategy of graphing and then erasing what you don't want can be kind of frustrating in Delta Math because of the way the tools work. So what I'm going to show you guys um, is I'm just going to kind of showcase how to do it algebraically. So when we're reading a piecewise function, if we read the top one, it says f of x equals negative 3x minus 8 for all x values less than negative 4. So I'm going to imagine that's going to be for everything over here. Then it says f of x equals negative 6x plus 1 for all x values greater than negative 1. So that's going to be everything over here. There's going to be a little gap in the middle. So in order to graph this, instead of using the y-intercept, because that's not even in our um, domain for the first one, we can use this as an endpoint and then use the slope and see what the pattern is. So I'm going to show how to do that. So if you take negative 4 here, you can do it with size graph, okay, and plug it in here, we will see where the function will be on this using this x value of negative 4. So algebraically, I'm just going to plug in negative 3 times negative 4 minus 8. So 12 minus 8 is 4. So when x is negative 4, y is 4, or f of x is 4. So negative 4, 4. That's where it starts. Now I'm using the draw tool. I'm not using the delta math tool. That's important to know because sometimes once you use the delta math tool, it can get a little frustrating. So then the slope is negative three. Now, normally I count out my slope to the right, but this is restricted area. It's for all X values less than negative four. Well, I can count out the slope backwards. One, two, three, to the left. Okay. Now I feel confident using my Delta Math tool. I'm going to go ahead and go here. With the Delta Math tool, start with your endpoint, and then it'll make a red circle, and then draw to create your segment or your line. Okay. Let me clear my mess. Now, we just graphed this. Now we just need to work on the endpoints. So this is for all x values less than negative 4. So this needs to be hollow because it doesn't actually equal this at negative 4. And then this goes on forever. So in order to make this an arrow, if you click once, it makes it hollow. If you click it again, it makes it an arrow. You can see the arrow just ever so slightly. OK, and I actually didn't have to extend the line all the way. I could have extended it here. And if I would have double clicked, it would have made the full line. All right. Now for the second part, um, what I'm going to do on this one is, again, I want to know wh where this function will be when x is at negative 1. So what's the end point? I will find that algebraically. I'll plug negative 1 in there in for x negative six times negative one plus one is six plus one is seven. So when x is negative one, f of x is seven. So we're talking about this way up here, okay? And this is true for all x values greater than negative one, so everything this way. So the pattern or the slope is negative six. I can count that out to the right, okay? And I only have to count it out once. I can count it out again if I want. Now I'm ready for my Delta Math tool. When you use the Delta Math tool, first click on the endpoint. And then you, only, you can drag it to one of your points, or you can go through both. It doesn't matter. Go ahead and clear this. And then this pattern, or sorry, this function is true for all x values greater than negative 1. So I want to, I can make this an arrow. Double click it. Okay, that shows that that continues. And I'm going to make this hollow because it actually, um, because of the inequality symbol here. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and submit it. Okay. 
and yay, I got it right. Right, so if you get it wrong, uh, the best thing to look at is to see if you did the hollow or open dots correctly, and then check your restricted domains. Um, the help video, again, is really, I found it to be really helpful. Uh, you can use your draw tool and then graph and try to erase the restricted domains, but using Delta Math, um, that strategy for Delta Math is a little bit more frustrating than just algebraically plugging in the endpoints. Okay, hope that helps. Happy learning. Good luck.